What's up, y'all, man? It's your boy Twiz, man, the 4 4 guy, man. I'm here back again, man. So listen, y'all. Throw the 500, man. I got the crazy giveaway for y'all, man. The crazy giveaway for y'all, man. Listen, let's get this to 500, man. We doing a great job, my 4 4 family. You know what I'm saying, man? Listen, make sure you like, comment, subscribe on the channel, man. And that's definitely running up. Also, go follow my other page, too, at Love Hustlers. You know what I'm saying? Couple channel. Right now, you know, I haven't seen Pokemon in, in a while. As you see down here below, I haven't seen that in, damn, decades. But when they had the Pokemon Go, oh, I was on it. I was on it. I ain't even gonna lie, I was in people's backyards. I was in stores, I was in libraries. I was in the middle of the road. I was looking for Pokemon, I'm not even gonna lie. But now they got this, sorry, this Pokemon uh, Dark. I, listen, once again, I'm open-minded. I'm ready to do something crazy, and I'm gonna go watch this and see what it is. I'm gonna react to it. I'm gonna tell you how I really feel about it, y'all. How I really, really feel about it. So listen, Road to 500, let's get it. I've played a lot of Pokemon in my games, and by that, I mean I've played the same Pokemon game with various different skins. But I'm here today to showcase one of, if not the most unique ideas for a Pokemon game Nintendo has published for our tiny little hearts. And that game is called Pokemon XD. Gale of Darkness, XD. A bit unfortunate, but it came out in 2005, so they get a pass. Why am I talking about it? I think it's an underground game not enough people know about. It does something different, kind of shakes up yeah, the Pokemon. Yeah, I don't really know it's too much about it. It's constantly overshadowed by its predecessor, Pokemon Coliseum. And yeah, okay, I played it as a kid. I'm very biased. Is that what you wanted? If you've not heard of it or played it, you're in for a treat today. The game opens up to a cargo boat, the SS Libra, out at sea where we find the captain and diving steers standing at the helm. All is calm and serene when suddenly they get swatted. And it's not no ordinary SWAT today, folks. No, sir. This is a Lugia SWAT. They run out to see what's going on, and the captain looks up and makes his face as if he wants to kiss Lugia passionately on the lips. But Lugia's not here for kisses. He's here for the opposite of kisses. What is that? Which is crime. He oh. hyper beams the cargo ship and then steals it. You heard what? him right? Just blasts the thing point blank and takes it away. Lugia's wow. ship now. The presumably only two people on the entire boat fall into the water and are left to just drown in the ocean, I guess. Wow. Well, that was a bit raw. What are we, a minute in and two people are dead? Yeah. Gen 10 could never. Hard cut for me because that's more important. You play as this boy kid named Michael, but actually his name is Jaden now because that's me. The game throws you into the middle of this intense looking fight between the Salamence and Metagross, both level 50. I don't know where I am, what the stakes are, who I am, but this battle seems really important and tough, so I'm gonna give it my all and immediately oko it. I did it! Screen goes black. I open my eyes, everything's blurry. <laughs> Turns out I live in a friendly laboratory run by this Professor Crane and his lab guys. I get up and the guy running the battle simulation tells me how good of a battler I've become. Aw, oh, thanks man. Then he immediately nags me by telling me it's about time I go out and get myself more Pokemon besides my one lame Eevee. Backhanded compliment at a child, but I'll take it, I think. I go into Crane's office where him and my mom are talking, and he says he heard from the battle coach that my battling skills have improved dramatically, and how proud he is of me. To which my own mom tells him to stop giving me compliments and praise because I'm gonna end up spoiled rotten. I don't know what kind of a response that is to a child receiving right. praise. Either I'm already a cocky little bastard or I'm being currently emotionally neglected by everyone in this building. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't think it's healthy for my mental development. To make this mother look even worse, we realize her only other child, Jovi, is missing and no one is looking for her. The world is wow. filled with overpowered wild rabbit animals and crazy people. No, I'm sure it's fine you haven't started looking for her. Keep doing what you're doing. I get a lead saying she really likes hanging out with family friend mad scientist Dr. Kamiko, so I head over to his house and I'm about to knock on his creepy door when this tiny little blind man, Chobin, the doctor's assistant, walks up and is like, BURGLER! and challenges me to a battle, to which I win because he only has a level 5 sun turn. Joby wow. comes up and is like, oh hi big brother, it's Joby. Did you get lost, big brother? Silly big brother, Joby will guide you back home. 
All right, I see why no one's looking for it now. We return home to the lab, and they present me with a snag machine. A machine that allows the user to catch shadow Pokemon, which are Pokemon that have been so abused that they turn evil. Now, they're saying they haven't seen or heard of any shadow Pokemon that exist anymore because they've all been purified years ago, but who knows when they could start popping up again. Better be safe than sorry. Bam, some guys from a secret organization called Cypher bust into the lab, beat everyone up, steal Professor Crane, what? stop their shadow. Pokemon and run off to their secret base oh, and never be seen what again. The hell? What? Well, I'll be. The lab is in shambles, not knowing what to do, but then decides they're gonna complete their purification chamber in his honor because Shadow Pokemon are back and they wanna do something about it. They sent me off to this seaside town Gadion port to retrieve a machine part they need, and Joey pesters our mom to come with because Joey doesn't think I can handle going out on my own, and Joey needs to hold my hand and guide her big brother the whole way. Okay, not only does this little snot talk in the third person for no reason, maybe our mom didn't care enough to get us any education. Perhaps she was worried the teacher would give us a compliment, heaven forbid, but she's also the most annoying character I've ever witnessed in any media, and I've watched an episode of My Hero Academia with a great kid in it. We go to Gaddian Court, and not two seconds pass until Joey pisses off this random guy, Zook, who happens to be the buffest man in the world. He's about to punt her, and I'm about to do nothing about it, when this old man and his color-coded henchmen step in and obliterate his shadow Zangoose. Old man, I was about to be free of everything that is bad in my life, and you took that away from me. We get the hard head back, and mom tells me about this spot in Agate Village called the Relic Stone where you can naturally purify Pokemon. What? I don't know why you're making your own purifying chamber then when there's a rock that already does that. I go to Agate, and this very enthusiastic man with a Pikachu shows me the stone, and Pikachu! I'm like, Cool. To which he's like, by the way, my friend Vander might know where Cypher took Crane. Oh. Okay. I go talk to Vander and he points to this random spot in the desert on my map and is like, Oh, they're right here. I saw them. What were you <laughs> doing out there? That's literally just sand. <laughs> wow, well, would you look at that? A headquarters. Huh. I start infiltrating the base, battling all the grunts that fall from the ceiling, snagging any shadow Pokemon I find, until I reach Pink Hatsune Miku, who's trying to get information out of Crane about purifying shadow Pokemon. I battle her and win, which means I get to unkidnap him, and while heading out, I find this data ROM on the ground. Huh. This seems very important and like it has a lot of secret information about Cypher on it. Convenient. Crane returns to the lab and everyone's happy, and then they send me to Pyrite Town to find Ned, a guy that should be able to crack this the wrong and all the information all the on it. So I head there and he's like, yeah, we can crack this, smile. While he's hacking it, I go out and play around in a random cave and run into Mirror B. This guy doesn't do much in this game, honestly, but I just want to make sure you know he exists and listen to his music. Hey. I go check on Ned again, and Cypher's busted and beat everyone up and kidnapped another person. Have you guys min-maxed how to kidnap people or something? You're two for two at this point, and are scarily efficient at it. They try to hostage situation the data run back, and even though I beat up this big man and take all the shadow Pokemon, Ned still wusses out and gives the ROM back. He thought he was being two steps ahead because he saved all the information on his server already, but Cypher just logs on and deletes everything anyway. Nat says the only thing he remembers from the ROM was that Cypher was behind the disappearance of the SS Libra, and they're about to attack this city nearby called Fennec, and someone needs to go warn them. Damn. Wow. I guess I'm just Mr. Scooter across the desert and Cypher <laughs> one day, aren't I? I head to Fennec to warn the mayor about the Damn. attack, and as soon as I arrive, this lady hits me with a confetti cannon, congratulates me on being the millionth visitor to the city, and shoes me away to celebrate at real gam tower. I try to get around her because this is important, but she's determined to gatekeep me no matter what I do. So I just go there and realize she literally sent a child to illegally gamble his life away. Wow! No one in this region likes children, do they? After nope. not being able to figure out how to play bingo, I head back, sneak into the mayor's house, distract his house sitter with music, and find out the mayor was trying to write a note to Justy, the city's gym leader, warning him about the cypher attack. I don't know why 
why the mayor was trying to ask this random gym guy to help, but he was kidnapped halfway through writing it, so I guess it doesn't matter. Cypher realizes I now know what's up, and everyone in town reveals themselves to be disguised Cypher grunts. Oh my wow. god, they kidnapped the entire town. I don't care what the kind whole of organization town? you're from. What? If you can successfully kidnap a village, You've earned my respect. I beat up Cypher, rescue their shadow Pokemon, and free literally everyone in the town who is locked in the city basement. Justy says he saw something suspicious going on in the desert and points to another random sand spot on my map I should go investigate. Honestly, how are all these people just stumbling onto these shenanigans in the middle of the desert? And why are they able to give the latitude longitude of these locations after finding them? This has got to be like tens of miles out from any sort of civilization. This is where people run out of gas in their car and then shrivel up and die before anyone can find them. <laughs> why were you here? Wow. Yep. That's the cargo ship. How did you find this? Right, it. What is so enthralling about this desert that crime and vigilante justice is constantly going on in every square inch of this place? Cypher's running around on the ship, and after I take their shadow Pokemon and chase them out, this group of strangers calling themselves Team Snagum walks up and roofies me. I wake up, realize the snagging machine. This random old man who just started living in the wrecked boat said he saw them head off in that direction and points to the middle of nowhere on my map again. You people are beyond me. I show up and wow, another headquarters for crime. I make my way to their head honcho, Gonzap, who's trying to put on my snack machine, but he's too big and muscular and adult. And since I am a child, it does not fit on his giant muscle arm. He pretty much gives up, asks if I want to join Team Snagum. I say yes, but he fights me anyway. And after I beat him, he's like, actually, you can have your arm thing back. We're not enemies. Awesome. <laughs> I thought it was a test. So why am I here? You drugged me, stole my stuff, and then just called friendship and gave it back. I find Cypher's shadow Pokemon factory and walk up to the actual biggest men I've ever seen in the world. How naive I was to think Zoop was big. Foolish me. Anyway, they're about to beat me TF up when Gonzap shows up, expresses his devotion to our newly blossoming friendship, and rubies them for me. Thanks, man. You're really consistent at that. I go inside and climb to the roof where their power generator is. There's a tiny little piece of paper there that says, Use system lever to adjust voltage. Do not uh, raise voltage too high. Uh, high. Crank! A guy comes out and starts <laughs> yelling at me with his Pokemon when the tiny old wow. man who accidentally ruined my life in Gadian Port comes on screen and is like, I'm evil and creating a Pokemon that's unpurifiable. Come get me. This is my IP address. I need to cross the ocean to what? get to him because he's basically on evil Hawaii. So I take this Robo Kyogre from Kamingo, speedboat my way there, and you guessed it, fight everyone in the building slash volcano until I get to the big little man. After fighting an entire country's worth of people, I find him. His name is Greeble, by the way. And he's like, I'm surprised <laughs> you made it this far. Crazy. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I'm busy, don't bother me. And blocks me with a giant pane of glass. Honestly, out of all the fictional villains I've seen, this is surprisingly decently reasonable. But I'm not gonna just sit here and stare at him behind the glass like a goldfish at PetSmart. So I just walk around and use the side door, which really sets him off. I mean, dude, either lock the door or don't have it. This is just what doors do. Gravel's like, you blew up our shadow Pokemon factory. You got past my glass. That's it. I'm summoning Shadow Lugia, the first no Pokemon to ever be unpurifiable. Come forth and obliterate this small boy. To which I just master ball it. Really overlooked that one, didn't you, mate? He may not be purifiable, but he's mine now. Damn. Fuel gel. Rebel gets so beyond pissed that he decides to open his creepy eyes and fight me himself. And I was surprised to realize not only does he have a team of all shadow Pokemon, but he somehow nabbed Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Oh. I'll be honest, it was a really, really hard fight because shadow Pokemon are super effective against all non-shadow Pokemon. I don't know how it took me this long to tell you that, but that's how it works. So instead of trying to catch them all like I've been doing this whole time, I really just beat them up and they ran away. So I win! Cypher has officially lost everything, and it's all because of me, the little boy. Blue Henchman runs up to Grievel and is like, Sir, I have a plan. Let's blow up the island with the kid on it. Which is like, oh my god. And then Red Henchman is like, okay, that's a bit too far, man. Dad, <laughs> let's go home. 
Yeah, they pulled the I'm your father slash son twist on us, but it has very little effect on me because I do not care about these people. Anyway, they decided to not blow up the island with me on it and stop being evil, I think. I'm like 60% sure. And then happy ending, I just go home. So what do you think? <laughs> For some reason, I really liked the game as a kid. I never actually beat it wow. because I didn't know how to get past the gatekeeping woman in Fennec. Glad I figured it out this time. I also wanted to mention how lively the animations are in this game. Sure, some of the Pokemon look god-awful. They gave Hamdor human knees that bent forward, but they're yeah, all just so expressive Pokemon. and show so much care and personality. It may be pretty sad that current games don't show this much passion, but I guess that's just what makes these games more cherishable. Anyway, the game was fun and weird. I liked it. See ya. Hey, uh, it's been a while. I loved it. First of all, the gatekeeper was her mom, then I'm guessing. And the fact that she even was narrating the whole thing, she was everybody, it was only one person voice. Did y'all notice that? Only one person voice. And the fact that she just, it looked like the Game Boy effect to cartoon effect to like, it was like, you know, like, I guess it, how it is when you're into. Don't get me wrong, like when you're in the Game Boy, I guess the character has his own mind of his own. Like it's more than just you just going across the bridge. And, but nobody tell you what's in between them bridges before you get to the big old, you know what I'm saying? Before you got to the ship. That was crazy. I like I, I like it. Um, It was cool. Um, I rate it, uh, I give that a 10. I give it a 10. It wasn't all over the place how I thought it would be. It literally was just telling you that I that I, how I took it as the character had his own mind of his own, like, you know what I'm saying? It's two different, it was, it was, it felt like it was two different stories in one. That's what it felt like. But overall, I loved it. Like, I, I loved it. Gatekeeper is the mom, but she figured it out. I, I loved it. It was cool, it was great. I rate that 100%, 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Listen, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the channel, man. That's running up, you know what I'm saying? Roll the 500. Roll the 500. We could do it, y'all. Let's go.